And we will not be daunted by this fight. While there is so much at stake, what we are building together is so juicy, so beautiful. What we want is that we put our hope and our belief in our communities, not the courts. Because our courts will fail us. We put it in our community. We put it in our freedom comes from us. Say abortion is freedom, y'all. Abortion is freedom! Our movement, like I said, is about community. It's about the collective. It's about us. So let me tell you what we are going to do together, y'all. We're going to make sure that anybody who needs an abortion will get one. Is that right? And we're not going to stop there. We're going to break up with patriarchy. We're going to break up with racism. We're going to make sure that our queer and trans kin can thrive. With love and support. So turn to your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, Okay. 
came from Argentina yeah. during the dictatorship. The, the mothers of Maine, Las Mujeres de la Plaza de Mayo, were going every week to a park with white handkerchiefs to make sure that no one forgotten about their kids that were disappeared by the dictatorship. And then the women's rights of Argentina decided, you know what, we're doing the same with green handkerchiefs for abortion because green represents health. So now this is a whole continental and global movement, guys! Let me tell you something. Several years ago, people would not believe that people here in the United States will be wearing green, and we are all united today. It's a fight. Which is to think bigger than ourselves. 
and I win with hundreds and hundreds of women, cis and trans, and we put our bodies on the line to try to stop exactly what is happening right now. We understood then, and now the chickens are coming home to roost. There is no time for inaction. I say this in this reality. It is my generation that is now inheriting this struggle in real time. We will be here in rain or sun. But I want to take us for a second to a very sober reality of what's going on. It is our generation, in particular Gen Z and Millennials, that are now of reproductive age and are feeling the immediate impacts of these bans right now as we speak. And there's no other way to say it. They are condemning us. They aren't just forcing us to have children against our will and stripping our most fundamental rights. They are doing so at a time where we are experiencing mass trauma in a global pandemic, when we are experiencing things like mass shootings, like the one that happened at my school. They are doing this to us when we have the largest student debt of any generation in all of history. They are doing this to us when we have low wages and no housing. Who is support? Who is supposed to support those children that you are forcing us to have?
there's a war in this country against women, trans, non-binary, and gender expansive people. We know there is a war against black and brown people in this country. We know there is a war on poor people, on the disabled, on the struggling. And we do not have the time to be divided and conquered. We have to unite together. Oh, I'm speaking! 
what to do, what to say. You're this, you're that. Well, no more, because I'm here for my brothers and sisters and the men who support my brothers and sisters that we have a right to make our own decisions, to live our own lives. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it real. You cannot tell me that the people who sit in leadership in the United States probably have sent their girlfriend or a friend to a clinic. Yes, ma'am! But they're the same ones who say, oh no, can't do it. Yes, ma'am. Or he told me he wasn't going to vote against that. The okie doke. Trust your gut. Live your life. This indigenous area of the Piscataway people was a matriarchal society. A society run by the woman. We did not experience rape or incest against our own kind. We respected it. The colonizers brought that shit here to America. Institutions have to be challenged. 
challenge. I'm here as a mom, an organizational leader, a white cis woman, a survivor, an activist, a voter. I'm here as someone who knows the power of my voice. I believe deeply in the power of yours. I'm here as someone who believes abortion is life-giving. It gave me my life. It gave my children my life. And I'm done playing nice with anyone who isn't fighting. In every way, to the male against this Republican minority assault on the world. to governors, to mayors, they have to tell us every single day, what are you doing to fight back against this racism, this misogynism, this attack on all of us? It means corporate CEOs need to be stopped pretending they're helping to give abortion benefits to their employees while they're bankrolling anti-abortion politicians. Comcast, Disney. Stop funding the anti-abortion movement. It's not hard. Stop. It means the president calling the crisis what it is. A national health emergency. A civil rights crisis. The administration, they told us yesterday they would bring the weight of the administration to bear on this crisis. And that's because all of us demanded it. They're not done. Our house is on fire. We don't need buckets of water. We need the whole fire department. We need a whole of government approach now and we need to focus on voting rights. We need to expand the court. We need to end the filibuster, codify Roe. Categorically reject anti-abortion politics and policy and give people a real roadmap. How will you deliver when we deliver for you in November? This is an emergency. Republicans are not holding back. We need you, President Biden, every Democratic position of power, to act like your life depends on it. Because the people for who you represent, it does. Our lives depend on it. Until we get our rights and freedoms back, we will see you in the streets. We will see you at the ballot box. And we're going to see you at your front door in a minute, and Tamika's going to take us forward.
Y'all, this baby is going to have a baby. And the government of her state looked her in her eye and told her she was ready to be a mother. And these are the people who claim to care about family. These are the people who claim to care about children. And there will only be more stories like this as we enter this chapter. Their stories must be our stories.
right, guys. It won't be like that forever. I'm going to have to sit you back up with you, okay? You good?
want it? Always. What do we want?
Oh, oh, oh sick, yeah. Like, where Where's our sign?